it's hard to see, but this is my Sega Game Gear as it stands at the moment before doing any repairs on it. The screen is very dull. If I show you with the camera actually in front of it like that, you see it's not brilliant on the camera. It actually looks a lot worse in real life. But you can see it's not particularly bright, especially if I bring the camera up a bit more. If you view it from this angle, it looks a lot better. But it's very dark. And you'll also notice there's no sound. That's with the volume turned all the way up. Turn it right down. All the way back up. Still no sound at all. So I've bought a new set of capacitors for it and I'm going to attempt to fit them now. Okay, so I've got the game gear here. I've opened it up. There's a little bit of damage internally. Looks like there's been some battery leakage, um, but nothing too serious. That's just a copper pad uh, to protect the PCB where the case actually touches against the main board. If you look at the front, oh, sorry, the back of the case, you'll see there's a big a uh, chunky section of plastic here which touches against the front and that's all that's there for so it's not actually uh, a major problem. Um, I've replaced two of the capacitors so far. Um, I've been watching a video on YouTube and they've indicated that these two here are the most common uh, capacitors to cause problems with a dim screen. So I've started with those two. Um, I've had to cut the legs shorter because as they come out of the packet they've got really long legs on them uh, so I've replaced them like for like with the same rating and uh, I've just powered the Game Gear on and the screen is much brighter um, I will just connect it now and demonstrate to you okay so I've connected the power supply board back to the main board I'm just going to switch the power supply on and you'll see uh, oh, it hasn't come on, so there must be a loose connection on there. Hang on. Okay, so switch it on. And you'll see immediately with the camera directly in front, that's actually quite bright now. Even if I move the camera up a bit, you can still see the picture quite clearly. Now that's actually with the brightness adjusted. Uh, if I turn it up, it goes even brighter. You see, and then we've got a lot more range on the brightness side for the shaky hand. See, that's much better now than it was before. So I'm going to now continue and replace the rest of the capacitors. Okay, so I've now replaced all of the capacitors. There's three on this side. And then there's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this side. Okay, and now I'm going to connect the power board and just make sure it's still working. So I've been through and double checked all of the capacitors are the correct way around. Um, because they're electrolytic capacitors, if you connect them the wrong way around, they do have polarity, uh, they will pop and possibly explode depending on the voltage being provided to each capacitor. So, go all the right way around, switch it on, and there we go, it's working beautifully. Nice bright screen. Screens were never brilliant on these Game Gears anyway, but it doesn't look too bad. We've got full brightness control there, it's still working perfectly. And the same with that. Not a bad picture at all. Okay, so now to see if I can fix the sound. So here is the power board. Um, I'm just taking this metal plate off here, which I need to remove before I can take the board out. Uh, you'll notice there's quite a lot of damage to the plastics here. Uh, and here, that's because of leaking batteries. So I'm not going to be able to reverse the damage, uh, but I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit once I've taken the board out. Alright, so here's the soundboard now. Um, you'll see I have replaced all of the capacitors. Um, it's 
bit of an interesting one this it was an absolute pain to get the old capacitors off uh, they were flat on the board so there's very little room to get in and several of them had leaked quite badly uh, I've had to clean the board up as best I can um, also because the board sits underneath an IO shield uh, partially this side of the board here has to be flat which is why I've had to put these capacitors in a very odd way. The original capacitors, uh, if I just find one for you here, you see they're actually sitting upright, but they're quite shallow compared to the capacitors that we put on there now, they're a lot shorter. So there isn't room for them to be stood upright. So I've had to lie them down. Um, there isn't any interference there, they're not shorting out, I've tested it with the multimeter so everything's okay um, the capacitors are all in, in the right order um, unfortunately one of the pads actually came off the board here when I was removing the capacitor so I've had to scrape away a bit of the trace and make a new contact for it uh, but it is making good contact so now I've just got to refit this board and test it so unfortunately when I fitted this board back in and tested it uh, there was still no sound at all um, no sound through the headphones, no sound through the internal speaker now as I said before I did test all the connections with the multimeter I've tested them again everything seemed to be connected fine nothing was shorting um, but the board was in quite bad shape when I started lots of electrolyte had leaked onto the board um, and it's led me to believe one of the other components, perhaps one of the ICs, is damaged. Um, there's also a bit of corrosion on the headphone jack there. I spent some time rechecking, reflowing some of the connections. Um, in doing so, a couple more of the pads actually came away from the board. Um, I did manage to resold the capacitors again, but still not no life is from it at all um, so I think that might be a good sign a lot of the information I've read on the internet from people with failed sound boards with the capacitor problem um, have reported muffled or quiet sound uh, whereas with this I was getting absolutely nothing at all not even a bit of crackling when you plug the headphones in at all um, so that might be a good indication that it's something a bit more serious than just the capacitors um, however, all is not lost because I have been onto eBay and found a seller who was selling refurbished soundboards. So here's the Game Gear. Here is the refurbished soundboard that I bought. Uh, so we can get a bit more light in there. Um, in fact, let me just turn my camera light on. There we go. Uh, you'll see it's the same board, new capacitors slightly different capacitors than what I've used uh, but they're the same rating uh, so I've just replaced the whole board it was only £5.25 I think uh, I'll put a link in the note in the comments uh, to tell you who the seller was on eBay he seemed to have quite a few on there um, and now I've got this board it works beautifully here we have the final finished product uh, I've reassembled it. It's all back in one piece. Nice and neatly back together. All the screws are back in. And I'll just switch it on now. And now you see. Contrast of it. Sorry, the brightness. Okay. And you'll see. I can turn the volume. Well, let it start playing some sounds now. Okay. Adjust the sound up and down. And that's working beautifully, ready to go back into my collection. So, 
overall pretty successful project. Um, it's a shame the soundboard wasn't able to uh, wasn't able to get any life out of it at all, but um, it didn't turn out to be too expensive to replace that part and the rest of it. All good. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. Uh, thanks for watching.